Wow, you guys really came through on the first episode about Samus' backstory. So I'm here to finish the history lesson. But before we go any further, make sure you go check out part one right here if you haven't seen it already. All right, guys, let's get to it. I'm Jocelyn the Intern. I do all the research nobody else wants to straight from the desk of death battle. <laughs> Okay, so we last left our heroine in a standoff with Mother Brain. Well, let me tell you, Volume 2 of Samus' crazy manga pretty much jumps right into it. Ridley shows up and starts laying into poor old Samus, and we discover that Samus has some pretty bad PTSD. You know, because he killed her parents and all. Well, it turns out Ridley remembers Samus, too. So he snatches Samus' skull up like an apple and blames her for blowing up his warships, even though it was actually her father. Whatever, close enough. Anyway, turns out when all that shit went down, Ridley got burnt up pretty bad and explains the only way he survived was by eating the bodies of all the dead humans lying around. Alright, everybody stop for a second. I would like to point out that this officially makes Ridley a flying purple people eater. Additionally, since the back of his head is so sharp, I believe it qualifies as a single horn. And this means Ridley is in fact a one-horned flying purple people eater. And, and seeing as how he's a pirate, that means that like all pirates of notoriety, he will eventually lose one eye and require an eye patch. So in conclusion, given enough time, Ridley will, you know, someday, turn into the one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater. <sighs> and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the most idiotic fan theory ever. Okay, guys, shut it down, lights off, show's over, we will never be able to top that, so let's just pack up and go home. Heh, <laughs> just kidding. Anyway, back to Zebus, where Samus is still getting swung around like a ragdoll. But don't worry, we'll just suddenly break away from all that intense stuff on the next page as we all simultaneously go, Oh yeah, those guys. When we see Samus's friends pop out of a wall panel and not only spot the captured Chozo prisoners, but find out that the space pirates are using the Chozo DNA machine thing to get super powered. Whoa, who would have ever thought that the superpower machine the Chozo used on Samus would ever be used for evil? They also spot Samus, who's in a sticky situation with Ridley. So, in true Scooby-Doo fashion, the meddling kids scrape together a plan and decide to use their ship's missiles remotely to blast all the nearby heat signatures in order to create a distraction. And guess what? The distraction works. The gang rescues the Chozo and Samus. However, she didn't really make it too easy for her friends to rescue her. Apparently, the trauma from the fight with Ridley was so intense that she had to curl into a ball on the floor asking to be killed. You know, at first it's kind of like, come on, Samus, get your shit together. But then you see through her eyes and the repressed memories that are coming back to her, including the one where Ridley crushed both her parents' skulls at the same time in the palm of his hands, like right in front of her. Hey, all I'm saying is if we've been cutting Batman slack for his traumatic dead parents, then we should cut our girl Samus a little too. Because that, that is some messed up shit right there. Lucky for Samus, the Chozo are mad good at comforting hysterical heroines. So, despite all the setbacks, Samus gets her shit together, but they aren't off Zebus yet, and it's about to start raining acid. Okay, seriously, can our girl catch a break for like five goddamn seconds? Acid rain? Like, what the hell? <sighs> anyway, to avoid the acid rain, they cut through Brinstar, aka the underbelly of the planet, and stay dry slash not melted. As the good guys make their way through Brinstar, Grey Voice, the evil Chozo who betrayed everyone, has a change of heart. Yeah, well, I guess. You never see any internal dialogue or anything. He just shows up at Mother Brain's feet in some sort of bird people power armor and starts blasting. I mean, yeah, Grey Voice is a prick, but at least he's doing the right thing now. You know, like Vader at the end of Return of the Jedi. Spoilers! <sighs> Sadly, Grey doesn't put an end to Mother Brain on account of the whole Ridley busting in through the roof out of nowhere and impaling Grey with his tail thing. Eh, nothing like a bit of penetration before you die. Eh? Eh? <sighs> Too soon? Anyway, Samus and crew are finally blasting off to safety. Well, mostly. Because thanks to the weaponless Chozo ship, Samus has to hang out on the roof as they exit the atmosphere so she can fight off the space pirates. 
Realizing she's a bit uh, outmatched, Samus buckles down for a fight. That is until the somehow still not dead Grey Voice blasts one of the massive pirate ships out of the sky, which gives the Chozo ship the time it needs to make it to space. Anyway, the Federation picks up the gang and they all live happily ever after. Except not really. You've played Metroid, it's never that cheery and happy. Okay, we're just about out of time, but before I go, I would like to point out this single panel and ask you all one question. Why? Why would anyone ever draw this terrifying teeth monster? And yes, if you're wondering, that is the same girl that's been a part of the group the whole time. It's just that for whatever reason, for this one exaggerated panel, she's turned into some sort of dental monstrosity. Ugh. All right, guys, that's all for today. There's still more to the manga, but it takes place years after this, and Samus dresses like Carmen Sandiego. However, if you want to hear more, you're going to have to ask really nicely. And by that, I mean like and subscribe. Because if you don't, then Boomstick and Wiz will never let me finish this story. See you next time. Bye-bye.